Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Riffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we're starting out the episode in front of the wonderful retirement home mansion. I would rather say that uh, I promised that I was going to move all of my villagers over from the trading hall to... And I have! I have moved them all over. They are kind of laying low right now, it seems like. Kind of getting used to their surroundings, but once we get into here you will see... The sheer amount of them that there are here, and they've all got their professions that they had before. Some of them are still working in their retirement. Sometimes, I don't know, you just can't let the work go, I suppose. But we have the tables for each of them, the workstations and stuff like that. And for the most part, they actually seem to be finding them inside of here. Sometimes they get a little bit confused. Sometimes the toolsmiths and the stonemasons will end up up here with the librarians. But they are social creatures. And they do seem to like to socialize a little bit. But up here at the top, we've got a few of them milling around. I don't know how he has ended up there. Probably over the top of this gold block. Um, all right, you're a tightrope walker, apparently. The new villager profession, tightrope walker. And uh, up here in the attic space, this is where, yep, we should have a little brewing circle. Although we seem to have a couple of farmers and fletchers and cartographers and stuff up here as well. And some otherwise misplaced folks. But in total, if you consider the amount of trading cells that we had, trading booths that we had in the trading hall originally, there are probably about 60 plus villagers in here. And I don't know, 60 plus is quite a large number to keep around, but we're doing it. We're going to keep them in there for the foreseeable future. And I should just mention that I swapped out the minecart rail we had across the door with a doorway made out of fence gates. And that's going to allow me easy access through while preventing any uh, zombies from coming in and attacking the villagers. Hopefully we'll prevent any pillagers from shooting through. I don't think you can actually shoot arrows through the gaps in fence gates, even though it does look like you can. So unless a pillager is an absolute genius shot or I leave these open, which I will try my best not to do, we should hopefully have a nice secure home for these villagers to live out the rest of their days, which means we can finally get around to taking down the old villager breeder and removing the last few villagers from that. And while I was opening this up, I realized that I still have a nitwit up here, which is actually something that is worth saving. Because one of the things I want to do at some point in this series is start a museum, which is going to include every single type of mob and block and item in Minecraft. And so keeping a nitwit around for the purposes of, you know, bringing him into a villager exhibit in the museum would actually be kind of nice. You don't get them from villager breeders anymore, so the only way to find them other than that would be to explore, find naturally spawned villages, and recruit a nitwit from that population. So I think we're going to keep this guy around. I think we might even bring him down into the retirement home and maybe just kind of stash him away somewhere so that we can pick him up later. I feel like that seems like a good thing to do. And then we'll obviously keep a minecart rail out to the retirement home for the rest of these guys. Because I think since they've been bred in an earlier version of the game, since they are villagers who were bred in 1.13, even though they have 1.14 professions and costumes now, I rather feel like they might not trade with us as much as 1.14.4 villagers are going to. So... I'm going to get a minecart rail set up. We're going to transfer the nitwit over to the retirement home as well. Maybe we'll keep him up there in the attic space or something like that. And then we'll carry on with the rest of this thing. We'll take down the trading hall and we're going to start trading to find some interesting trades in the new villager population. Starting, of course, with our two zombie villagers who have been patiently waiting over here to be cured. There we go, and with all that taken care of, we can finally get around to taking down this villager breeder. It's really felt like unfinished business since 1.14 came around, and especially since I decided to clear up this kind of technical area I was using and turn this into some sort of, uh, you know, actual enterprise out here, some sort of actual villager town or something like that. But yeah, it really did feel like it had been a long time coming, but I wanted to make sure that the villagers in here were taken care of in a way that didn't involve dropping them into lava. And this feels like a nice solution. It even looks a little bit like the same sorts of materials that we've used around here to make the villager breeder in the first place. So hopefully they'll feel right at home. 
And while the new home for the new batch of villagers is going to be a pretty sizable structure, I don't think I'm ready to start building it yet. I think I still need to take a couple of passes at it, maybe start some stuff in creative mode and figure out exactly what I want this place to look like. But the first thing I want to do is start curing some of these villagers and actually find a couple of trades that I have not yet seen in Minecraft 1.14, which seems kind of crazy considering how far through 1.14 we are at this point, like how long we've been working with this update for the game. But there are still a couple of trades that I have yet to make, and some of them involve villagers that I don't really even deal with all that often, but this might just be an excuse to give them a try. So I think one of the villagers over here is going to have a profession that I don't normally spend that much time around. Hello. Hello? <laughs> Who's that sneaking into my storage system? Are you stocking up on new trades? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> There's been an invasion! My old nemesis, the wandering trader, is back. And, oh, he's selling lily pads. Those... I almost want to buy because it feels like lily pads, you know, they're the kind of thing that you can get from swamps, obviously, but they're not really renewable right now except through the wandering trader. I've already got a stack of them in here. I don't really need to trade them, but that is... Possibly one of the more tempting offers, generally speaking. If you need them for aesthetic builds and stuff like that, two lily pads per emerald, not a terrible trade. You could still only get 12 before he locks up. Ah, I wish you were better. I really wish you were better. Anyway, let's move on, and let's move on to curing these two. Of course, we're going to need some splash potions of weakness and some golden apples, so let's head over to the potions lab, and let's order up a spider eye, which I'm pretty sure, yep, we got a fermented spider eye in there. That should start it a-brewing, and all we should need then is the gunpowder to get this thing all cooked up with three splash potions of weakness. There we go, three weakness potions all ready to go, and we should hopefully only need one of these, although there is one more zombie villager who I am interested in curing. And it's this guy down here who has been trapped in here since I was curing zombie villagers and putting them to work spreading the good karma in my trading hall, which sadly was a failed experiment, and as of 1.14, they don't tend to share around the good gossip from being cured as zombie villagers, or at least if they do share that good gossip, then over time the villagers who have not been cured forget that they have been given that good gossip. And so, yeah, this guy didn't really turn out to be as useful as I was hoping, but he still deserves to be cured, so we're going to cure him. He's been standing there holding that wood plank for so long, I feel like he needs a redemption arc at this point. I feel like he needs to be cured. So let's make up some golden apples and let's do that to start with. And I can't remember if this guy had any trades originally, but I guess we're going to find out in a minute. And in the meantime, I will do my best to split these two up. If I can get this guy lured over to one side of the fence there, perfect. There we go. They shouldn't be able to attack each other through the fence if they decide to attack each other. I'll splash them with a potion of weakness like that and cure them each with a golden apple. And hopefully, while they stay in the water like that, they shouldn't jump up and down, take any fire damage. They've lasted this long. Hopefully, they'll be able to turn into regular members of society again. Hey, our friend down here is cured, and it looks like he is currently unemployed. Well, very cool. We can take him out of here. We can remove all of this water now. Let's see if he starts pathfinding towards stuff. You know what? Let's give him something to pathfind towards ourselves, because I want this guy to be a cartographer. That's right. You heard me correctly. A cartographer. Why would I want a cartographer, you ask? Don't they have kind of useless trades? Don't they have just like an okay paper trade, some empty map trades, and some maps to stuff that we've already found, like woodland mansions and ocean monuments and stuff like that. Well, yes, they do, but they also have one other trade that I'm really quite interested to see if we can get. So I'm going to trade some paper with this guy, especially since his trades are reduced in price thanks to us curing him from a zombie, and I guess we can trade him some glass paint. Oh, a compass. And, oh, it's one emerald and a compass for an ocean explorer map. Well, that's that's fair enough. We'll see what we can get out of this guy anyway. Although, if he keeps running away from his workstation, that's going to be an issue. But, nope, looks like he is actually pathfinding back towards it. Now it's reached the work time of day. Fantastic. Good. We're going to need we're gonna need a few trades. Oh, and it looks like his friends over there have cured as well. Brilliant. Let's trade as many glass panes as we can, all in one fell swoop, and see what the next tier of trades unlocks. We can also trade a few compasses to him. We've got a redstone farm and an iron farm so that's going to work out just fine and the cool thing is we should now be able to trade 12 compasses at once yeah there we go all in one go and that should unlock the next tier of trades nice and quickly and he has started selling banners this is pretty cool actually this is kind of neat he's an expert right now his xp bar seems to be full 
What can we trade with him to get him leveled up to master? Maybe a little bit more paper. I guess we could go through with that. Maybe a couple of banners as well. We could do with those blue and green banners for something maybe. Yep, and that gem just turned blue. Hopefully, yes, there it is. A banner pattern that we have not yet seen. And I'm so happy this guy has finally been able to trade it with us. This right here is a banner pattern it is not possible to craft in vanilla minecraft it can only be obtained through cartographers and i have no idea how it has taken me this long to get this banner pattern figured out and to get it for the series but this is going to be the globe banner pattern the globe <laughs> it's actually quite cool this was added for minecraft 1.14 and as i said it can only be traded from cartographers no idea how i didn't manage to get hold of this before but i think we will need to use one of these blue banners and perhaps some light green dye if we have it up here let's see if we got any in the dye chest got plenty of regular green but i think we can also make lime green by smelting some sea pickles so let me grab some of those and before we go too far let's Let's make a little trading booth for our friend of the cartographer here just so he doesn't wander off too far i don't want to keep him trapped in here as such for the time being but uh yeah i think we'll probably have to keep him in there he's not going to refresh his trades at this workstation until he's got a trap door above his head making it feel like he can get out of there but i think for now oh maybe he did just do that at least he worked uh, yeah, the compass trade is refreshed. <laughs> Let me grab a few more of those. But for the main event, we are going to be smelting some sea pickles. We can smelt 12 with a single blaze rod, but all I will need is one lime green dye, because then we can take that up here to the loom. If I can get up my own staircase, here we go. We can put the blue banner in there with the globe pattern, and we can add the globe pattern to the banner. And look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that such a cool banner pattern to have? I have yet to see how this can be incorporated into designs for stuff. I haven't really been able to tinker with the globe pattern all that much, and my favorite banner making website, needcoolshoes.com, has not updated their banner maker with this design. However, there are more available out there. I kind of think Planet Minecraft might have one, although their banner design interface is a little bit different, but if you don't want to mess around with this in your world, if you want to just be able to, uh, to design design something you know and, and shift the layers around and stuff like that probably worth a go i will leave a, a link to that in the description for you guys but look at that we now have a banner pattern and that is actually going to be super perfect for putting together a map of the world and a map of the overworld is something that i have been holding off on doing because of course i still have a lot of stuff i need to build around here and a lot of stuff that i want to do but a world map is something i would dearly like to do at some point and now we have such a great banner to decorate an area like that i think it would be super cool to build a kind of map house somewhere maybe even in founders forge and have somebody who has been a cartographer and i think it would actually be really cool to have banners for each of the villages in this trading hall that i'm going to be setting up over here we're not going to take down this trading hall quite yet i kind of feel like leaving that up almost as a monument to it it being in the series in much the same way as the farmhouse is but i do want to build something a lot nicer over here and maybe we can close that off or incorporate it into some other kind of building repurpose it something like that instead of just tearing the whole thing down but this guy is going to be the start of a new trading era for us here and i think we can get a couple of interesting trades out of his friends over here as well these two guys over here are going to be a farmer and a leather worker. And if the leather worker part surprises you, it's because there is actually a couple of interesting new trades for the leather worker that I'm kind of interested in exploring. And they aren't necessarily trades that we couldn't get without the leather worker's help, but in this case, I sort of feel like we might want the leather worker a little bit more regularly. There we go, we got one guy who is now a farmer, and let's see if we can get his friend to become a leather worker as well should just be a cauldron and there you go the leather worker apron pops on there immediately and these two are ready to work we've got a bunch of leather back at the farmhouse that's totally fine what kind of trades do you have wheats and beet mm, not my favorite i kind of prefer if they trade carrots and potatoes i think we'll aim for carrots at least because we are farming those automatically up here on the hill although we haven't really been around long enough for them to farm a huge amount automatically but of course this is our multi-crop farm up here where we can get both carrots and potatoes so ideally in the long run both of those trades would be useful we also have a couple of other friends up here on the mountain who have managed to survive the harsh winter up here and stave off any zombie attacks in order to hang out here in this boat 
chilling and I guess looking down the mountain at the oh <laughs> they're probably looking at the retirement home I just built the other villagers well don't worry guys we're going to build you something good as well but once we have traded with the farmer a few times here which we have plenty of carrots to do and that trade stays open for so long now it's super nice I like that let's see if we can get this guy past novice level very good okay now we can buy some more gold apples if we wanted to I mean some apples and we can add the gold ourselves we also have a pumpkin trade for one emerald that right there is the future of trading let's go and grab ourselves a few pumpkins oh yes got pumpkins by the bucket load over here at the farm I need to clear out my inventory a little bit there but uh, hopefully we should be able to trade a bucket load of pumpkins and I need to go and grab some leather for this guy as well here we go got a bunch of leather over at the farmhouse so let's upgrade the leather worker from a novice the trade I'm looking for is a little bit further down the list here let's see in the meantime oh melon trade one emerald that's also very good I mean it's no melon slice trade like there was in bedrock edition but I have a few melons here made up and we are still getting melon slices in there by the bucket load I just wish you could apply silk touch to pistons somehow so they didn't break the melons when they pushed them no mind let's trade that with the farmer here so we can un unlock his later tier trades he's a journeyman right now we need to upgrade him to an expert and from there we can buy suspicious stew and cake <laughs> those are both kind of nice trades even more importantly the leather worker is now buying flint from us and that's very good news for me because i absolutely hate having flint lying around it's so nice that the leather worker and i believe the fletcher will now buy flint off of you because anytime i mine gravel without a silk touch shovel i just get all this useless flint having an infinity bow just means you have no uses for flint outside of maybe one or two flint and steels but i've got a stack here that i can happily trade with him there we go we can get rid of some of that go back to trading leather and he is most of the way to being a journeyman let's take a look at the farmers trades let's trade a little bit more in the way of melons and pumpkins while we can because the trades currently refresh super quickly which i believe has taken a bit of a hit in the next snapshot but now yes he has both the glistering melon slice trade and most importantly three golden carrots for an emerald people have been on at me to get golden carrots on the go for a while especially since we have both a carrot farm and a gold farm but i have to say with how easy it is to farm emeralds now gold carrots three for an emerald is super nice as a trade and golden carrots as you may know are actually some of the best food in the game primarily because they have such a high saturation value it will take longer for you to get hungry after you've eaten a golden carrot than it will for any other kind of food and that is why golden carrots are quite sought after and having the ability to just buy them wholesale from farmers like this is actually really useful it means we can keep the gold in our gold farm for stuff like powered rails and other things it means we can keep the carrots for trading for a bunch of free emeralds and i really think this is going to be a profitable trade for everybody concerned now let's see or we can trade some rabbit hide with the leather worker or we can trade even more leather over there and look at the amount of experience we're getting from these trades as well that's so good and i tell you what sleeping through the night with villagers around is actually really difficult i had to fight these guys for this bed but pretty soon i think in the next update it should be possible to kick villagers out of a bed by right clicking on it if we need to so uh we should be able to make sure that we can sleep through the night even if these guys can't and i want to wait for that leather worker trade to unlock again hopefully these guys should return to their workstations but i will need to keep a close eye on them and make sure they stay nearby because they stand to walk a little distance away if i'm not too careful here one useful thing i've noticed is that if you open their gui take a few steps back and open it again they will kind of walk towards you like this and in a pinch you can use that to make sure that they don't go too far of course it will only work on one villager at a time but if you're quick with the keyboard you should be able to lure him back over to the area where you want him to work if he tends to wander a little bit too far they are very social creatures though and they will seek out other villagers to go and socialize with and i think that farmer actually went over there to talk to the cartographer in his booth so we are potentially going to have to keep them contained in something like the villager trading hall that we had if we want to keep them all organized in a future trading hall around here but the design i have in mind kind of accommodates that so hopefully we shouldn't have too much trouble now let's try and get this guy back over to his composter so that he can begin the work day yeah okay looks like he is headed over there after all and there we go that's the work day started a little bit more leather to trade with you uh let's maybe buy just a couple of items of leather armor just to kind of keep him happy there we go leather horse armor this is actually quite exciting and you can craft leather horse armor yourself out of seven leather but 
I think buying it for one emerald from a leather worker seems like kind of a cool thing to do anyway. And the coolest thing about leather horse armor is that you can dye it different colors, meaning that you're no longer restricted with your horse armor to having just the three different colors of gold, iron, and diamond. You can have a variety of colors for a horse by dyeing horse armor different colors. And like other leather items, it is not just restricted to having the 16 colors of dye. You can dye it a second time and a third time until you get a color that you are happier with, much like the other leather armor and stuff that's out there. Let's take this blue dye and then clear it up a little bit with the white dye. And this leather horse armor is going to be a much more unique color. So let's head over and apply that to one of our horses. I think one of these white horses could have a lovely set of leather armor. There you go. That's it's like horse pajamas. <laughs> I actually really quite like that. And, and it, it fits in nicely with the other horses that have the gold and diamond armor. Unfortunately, I don't think the skeleton horse can have armor, uh, which is a shame because he needs it the most out of the other horses. He is the one who is wearing the least natural clothing. But consider right now we can trade one leather for an emerald and then one emerald for a leather horse armor that would normally cost us seven leather we are saving bucket loads on that transaction thanks to the fact that we cured this guy from a zombie and i'm going to keep these villagers around they are going to form the basis of my brand new trading system and i think we are going to attempt to get every possible trade in this trading hall it is going to be a mammoth enterprise but i'm looking forward to it i haven't spent enough time with villagers lately it is time to change that so folks that is going to be it for this episode of the minecraft survival guide thank you so much for watching please don't forget to leave a like on the episode if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys soon take care bye for now